talk about the Democrats who really are on my last nerve. Yeah. First of all, I well, think yeah, that's generous. <laughs> I think, there are no nerve with me. I mean, they are dropping all over the place, and we're going to lose the whole Congress in November. That is correct. Yeah, as I as I've said uh, on my website, uh, they're in for an ass whooping of biblical proportions. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If they don't turn this around right now, if they don't change, if they don't do the job they were sent there to do, it's all over for them. So what do they? Ha what does Obama have to do? You know this whole thing about you know reaching over over the other side. That's really, who cares? Yeah, no more Pull kumbaya. Up. No, we're done with that. Right. And I I don't know if he has it in his personal character, his personality, right. to be strict like Bush which is was. a good thing and a bad thing because it actually because I think he is a decent person because I think he has a good heart. He's a gentleman. Absolutely. Yes. And and I think he really came in there with one. He's not going to give up his own personal political beliefs, but. I think he really did want to, you know, figure out how to work with them. When they come into town, when the Republicans win, mm -hmm. they get in their Hummers and they barrel down Pennsylvania Avenue mm -hmm. with all guns blazing. Get out of the way. We're in charge. And these are the laws we're going to pass. And that's that. That's not the Democratic way. Why? Why, Why can't we do that? Because we don't, we don't like to start wars. We're like a peaceful people. Well, he's in we're Afghanistan. Like, <clears throat> he's in the war. He's well, doing he's, it. Well, he inherited a war that, again... He doesn't have the wherewithal to say, you know what, that is a mistake. It, it wasn't a mistake to go after the killers of 9-11. But al-Qaeda essentially is not in Afghanistan anymore. I know. Where are they? We can't catch up with well, them. They're well, always they're everywhere. moving around. And they're now, everywhere. Did you see that thing about jihad <laughs> That's Jane? That's why the war will never end. Did you see the jihad Jane? She's a blonde with blue eyes type yeah. now. They can't even like, stereotype them anymore. Yeah. Well, I just think, look. It's best to treat people who, who commit murder like this as criminals. Right. That was our whole wrong approach to this. We treated it as a military operation when it should have been a criminal operation. You do what the you do what is what you do what the Israelis do. You send in the Mossad and you grab them and you bring them to justice, and that's the end of that. Uh huh. And that's you know that well I mean after a trial and. You know, of course. A jury verdict. It has to be a trial. After first. a few minutes. Okay, you know. now um, Carl Rove has a book out. Yes. And he said this. He said, Americans are hard to mislead. Do you agree with that? Uh, no, actually, we're quite an easy people to mislead, in part because, and this is, another, this is another reason why people in other countries actually do like us as individuals, we're very trusting people. We're very kind of... Is that of, dumb? Well, no, it's not dumb. It's actually, wouldn't you rather be a trusting person than not? Well, there's a difference between being trusting and being naive. Well... That's what that's I'm just saying that's the good side of the coin. The bad side of the coin is we have created a society of ignorant and illiterate people. Our schools have done this. Our media has helped to contribute to this. We have 40 million adults in this country right now who are functional illiterates. That means they can't read and write above a fourth grade level. When you have a society that dumb, so to speak, that ignorant, well, ignorant yeah. that well, dumb, I mean, dumb in the sense that, well, they've been kept that way. Illiterate. I mean, it's an enforced dumbness by a system that doesn't value education, uh, that puts it low on the list of, of priorities. And um, I was just listening to watching CNN here earlier today, and, and they had this guy on talking about this in terms of how the college tuition has gone up and, and kids, kids who come from the poor and working class, they were told to work hard in school all these years, and the ones who did, now they can't afford to go to college. Right. So what's the message here? The message is go to a state school. I went to Queens College and Stony Brook, and I had paid nothing for my education practically. And well, but that but that was you know a long time ago. And in California, New York, a long time ago, yeah. I remember this time. Yeah. I remember thinking people I knew that lived in these two states that got to go to college for free. I mean, you guys were like France. That's true. You know, I had it all. Twenty-four dollars a term.